Now let's go and look at the, uh, uh, going to Philippians. And look what Paul said. Everybody talk about Paul, but they don't read this catch right. They don't read his right. Because if they read his right, there would be a different attitude in the church, sisters and brothers. In fact, they don't read nobody's right. You go down to the uh, uh, books, uh, the biblical store and buy you a sermon. And get big money for it. If I was getting all, if I was accepting pay and getting all this big money, at least I do is sit out and, and fix you a nice sermon on my own. <laughs> but the whole thing, sisters and brothers, people have forgotten why you here. People go to, some people go to church for fashion shows. Some go to church to hear good music. Some go to they just like the preacher. But when you ask them something out of the Bible, they don't know nothing. And if the, and the preacher, if he's the preacher is the only one that knows something, sisters and brothers, then you need to change church. Even if you're here for the first time, you're going to leave here knowing something that you didn't know before you came here. And that's the way it has to be. And the people that have been around a long time, if they listen real close, even then you hear the same title, you learn something every year. It's because that's why we're here. The Lord had it written you have to work out your own salvation. You have to deliver yourself. And in order for you to work out your own salvation, and in order for you to deliver yourself, you have to have some knowledge. My knowledge is good for me, but it ain't going to help you unless I can pass it on to you. It's all that simple. Philippians, the third chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 3. Philippians 3 and 3. Philippians 3 and 3. Okay, go ahead. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus uh -huh. and have no confidence in the flesh. As if you are really not only physical circumcised, but spiritual circumcised. You don't have no confidence in the flesh. Go ahead and read. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, uh -huh. I more. Now Paul is letting these Hebrews know because it's always been a problem with Paul because Paul was highly educated. He talked, to a, he talked to a whole lot of people, and he had to approach them in a whole lot of different ways, and, and the Israelites really didn't care too much for Paul then, and they don't care too much for Paul now. But that's why Paul is doing this. He said, look, I also trust in the flesh too, since we're going to go there even more. Go ahead and read. Fine. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. He said, I was circumcised the eighth day. And I'm the stock of Israel, go ahead and read. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Of the tribe of Benjamin, go ahead. And Hebrew of Hebrew. Uh-huh. As touching the law, a Pharisee. Now, how many brothers nowadays that kick against Paul can make that statement? Then again, Paul is telling the Gentiles, I am not a Gentile. I'm an Israelite. I'm on the stock of Abraham. I was uh, circumcised according to the law on the eighth day. And I am out of the tribe of Benjamin. This guy have his own. And he said, look, and according to the faith, he was a Pharisee. These guys, the Pharisees, believed in God. They believed in the law. They just had a problem with Jesus, sister and brother. Even though they knew the Messiah was coming, they the one kept asking, are you the one? See, the Sadducees didn't believe in no God, no Jesus. They didn't believe in no resurrection. They, I don't know what the Sadducees were. <laughs> but Paul was a Pharisee. And that's why he was so zealous about chasing people down and killing them because they thought they was breaking the law and he thought they were serving another God. Go ahead and read. Six. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. That was his zeal. What? And before he knew it was the real church. He walked around. He dealt with people. Go ahead and read. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, uh -huh. blameless. Ain't that something? Touches the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. That's a big statement there. This cat lived it to a letter. And he was really, really into this thing. That's why when somebody come up talking about Jesus and this is the Messiah, he thought that Jesus, you know, you, you serving a man, a pagan God, until the Lord dealt with him. Go ahead and read. Seven. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. He said, but all I gained and all my zeal. I count it all loss for Christ. Go ahead and read. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Uh-huh. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Uh-huh. And do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Look, what, what did Paul do? Paul, Paul found that, that pearl of great worth, didn't he? 
which was Jesus and the word he brought, sister and brother, Paul understood immortality then. So all his gains he gave up. And everything that he had, every advantage that he had acquired, he counted them as dumb. The waste that come out the body. That's how Paul thought about it. Because when he really understood what he was about, it was about nothing. So he went and he started dealing with something. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. That I may know him. He said, I've counted as dumb that I may know him. Go ahead. And the power of his resurrection. And the power of his resurrection. Go ahead. And the fellowship of his suffering. Uh huh. Being made conformable unto his death. He said, now look, I gave it all up because I wanted to know the Lord. I wanted to know about the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And I want to, and I understood, I want to understand the conformable of his death. In other words, he died. And when he rose out the grave, he was God. And you have to die spiritually. And you have to walk in the word of God so you can make that transition. Because Paul have a purpose here. Go ahead and read. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. He said, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. In other words, Paul said, I have given it all up. I count it as nothing. I have sought the Lord so I can can be raised from the dead. In other words, Paul simply wanted to be God, sisters and brothers. But if you're going to deal with that, you got to deal with the word of God. You can't deal with what people are paying for nowadays and what people are want to get paid for nowadays. Let's go and Paul talks about that too. Let's go into 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Because nobody reads the book, sisters and brothers, nobody reads this. You go to church and you don't know nothing about Bible. Somebody asks you, where's Genesis at? You have a problem trying to find that. <laughs> and all you got to do is open the first cover up and there it is in your face. But people get offended. I hear a lot of people say they get offended the way I teach. I'm going to tell you something. Get all the offended you want, but you go home and you check this out. That's what you do. I'd rather offend you, make you mad, and make you study so you can save yourself than to soft soak you and to pet you and stroke you <laughs> so I can get cut off because I allowed you to get cut off. It ain't going to happen to me. I'm going to let you go to hell by yourself. Because <laughs> God done made it, he done made it perfectly clear to me what the watchman is supposed to do is to warn you about him. Because this is a dangerous God. Most people don't understand. This same Jesus that everybody made a part of, her, he's the one that drowned the whole world and only saved eight people. He's the one that killed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire, rain down from heaven and all the sister cities. He told Israel to go and kill all the seven nations of Canaan. He's to kill women, children, babies, everything. When I leave, I don't, want, I don't even want the trees standing. And you messing with this guy? People don't know who Jesus is. And Jesus didn't start with Mary. He didn't come out of Mary. He came through Mary. You ain't never dealt with the Father. Jesus was one dangerous individual. But don't nobody know about him, sisters and brothers. So why? Because everybody want to come to teachers to teach them what they want to know. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, and verse 1. 2 Timothy 4 and 1. Okay, read. I charge thee therefore before God and uh -huh. the Lord Jesus Christ. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Who Go. shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now look, we just learned something right there if you have, if, if, if just killed a whole uh, Roman Christian doctrine. Who shall judge the living and the dead at his coming? And on the day of judgment. At his coming. Is Jesus here now? Then is the dead, is, then how can a dead be in heaven or no good dead be in hell? Because if he's in heaven, haven't God judged him to be good? Yep. And if he's in hell being barbecued by Satan, haven't he been judged to be bad? Yes, but if Jesus haven't come, then there have been no judgment. All the dead is still dead. That's on your way to learning something. If they just paid attention to this one verse in this fourth chapter, that your flag would go, wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
<laughs> you mean the living and dead ain't going to be judged until Jesus comes and that is kingdom? Well, where is Jesus? Well, he's still in heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father. If that's the case, then, why you tell me old Rotten John is being barbecued in hell? Why are you telling me that my mama is sitting in heaven looking down on me smiling? Perhaps you lied to me. Think about it. This is a little bit of one verse. Let's kill a whole Christian doctrine, so-called Christian doctrine. One verse. Your, verse. your doctrine ain't very good if you can kill it with one verse. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Preach the word. Preach the word, not what you felt like some spirit spoke in your head while you were standing in front of me. Preach the word. Go ahead. Be instant in season. Uh huh. Out of season. Go ahead. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Nah, it said people tell me I don't argue about what does reprove me? What does rebuke me? With all long suffering and doctrine. That's why I tell people all the time, well, you know, we got a discussion on the job, and we, we had this bill. I said, did you have your Bible over? No. I said, I don't want to hear no more about it. Even if you tell the truth, they done been lied to so much. I tell you, what make you think that they should, why should they believe you? If you're going to deal with doctrine, you got to deal with this book. Go ahead and read. Three. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Uh-huh. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves, teachers, Having itching ears. And that's what this time is here, sisters and brothers. They won't do a sound doctrine. All the people that are dead, they're not going to be raised according to what the Lord said with his own mouth. St. John, the sixth chapter, he said it four times. He's going to raise them at the last day. Four times the Lord said it. You know why? Because he knew he was going to get somebody to say the dead is, you know, that ain't, see that body there, that ain't the, that ain't the uh, 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 person that used to be. That's just a shell. They done made a transition. They in their new house now. Hmm. That is not sound doctrine. Christ was read, died on Easter Sunday. I mean, it's on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday. And Jesus said the reason, he gave the reason for him being the Christ, a sign that he would be in the grave three days and three nights. You can't get it from Friday to Saturday, from Sunday. All you got to do is pray over whatever food you can eat, and you can eat anything. The Lord gave you the dietary law, and nobody asked him for it. He volunteered and gave it to you. <laughs> you don't have to keep the commandment. Then there ain't no sinner left, because sin is the transgression of the law. So, sister and brother, you see how they won't endure a sound doctrine? You go into any church and tell them, you got to keep the commandments. They had the mercy to get you on up out of there. Go ahead and read. Four. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth uh -huh. and shall be turned unto fables. And that's all you have now is fables, sisters and brother. Christ born on the 25th day of December. Go in your encyclopedia and look under Christmas. You're going to find out that's one of soul sites. Sunday's a Christian Sabbath day. That's a fable. Have you ever wondered why it is called Sun Day? That's because that's the day of the sun worship of sisters and brothers. But do nobody investigate? Well, I trust the preacher. <laughs> Used to be the old days to get old salesmen to come around. You trusted him too. He said you a $2 item for $20. Trust me now. You're going to like that. <laughs> Being that you didn't look at the item and, 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 look up and look up and see what it costs, you done paid for it. Well, I've been cheated. No, you haven't been cheated. You just decided to give away some money. So, sisters and brothers, so this is what happened now. They turned the fables. Now everything is about money. 